Okay guys, welcome back to the layout. We are on our advanced DCC series. This is part 4D. In part 4A we installed our Digitrax DH165AO decoder. We did the install. Wow, there's some thunder there in the background. We've got storming up here near Chicago. We, uh, in part 4B and C, we did some uh, programming. We did four digit address change and we did some CV programming with uh, momentum and uh, speed matching and now we're getting ready to do our sound install we will be using a Digitrax SFX004 same one that I've used in my other installs okay all we're gonna do is take the blue chip with these pins that are here and seat it with these holes that are right here and I'll do this as best I can, I'm still getting enough light here so you can see it or getting my hands in the way. Be real careful not to force anything, but just seat that comfortably right up in there, just like that. And with a Phillips head screwdriver, tightening the two decoders together. Don't use a, a magnetic screwdriver, use something that doesn't have a magnet in it because you are dealing with electronics that has memory in it and you'd hate to wipe out the memory of what's in these, especially after all the work we've done with the CV programming. Get that in there nice and snug. And I'll zoom in a little bit so you can see what I got here just like that okay I've placed the locomotive on the program track and this program track is not hooked up any part of the layout it is only hooked up to the Digitrax PR3 and the PR3 is hooked up to the computer and because the New SFX004 has a default address of 3. We're going to change it to our road number of 6301. And I'll hit that. And that's done for both the DH165AO as well as the new SFX004. And there it goes. You can hear the little buzzing. This usually takes a few minutes, depending on the size of the project. Now, the total project size cannot exceed the memory or flash size of the decoder. The decoder memory is 524 megs or excuse me, 524, 288 bytes. Uh, that's uh, 524 kilobytes, if I understand that correctly. Not megabytes, but kilobytes. So it's a pretty small project size. And out of the 524, I'm only loading up 399, so I have plenty of room. As you approach the 524 mark, uh, things tend to uh, not work and that might be because uh, the flash size, I know it's a little cut off here, requires a little bit of memory too. So don't build your project all the way to 524 and leave a little bit of room for your flash size too. And as you can see this is almost done with this download. And what I'll do is when it is done I will take the locomotive and I will place it on the main line and we'll test it there as well. And again, this is the custom uh, EMD SD40 sound file that I'm working on. I can't take the full credit for this file because I originally got it from one of the Digitrax uh, sound uh, forums, one of the Yahoo groups, that's online. And uh, the gentleman there that 
helps manage the form. Uh, I know him as Alex. Really came up with most of the file. I have since modified it to where I've got it today. Okay, installing the SFX004 decoder is actually the easier part of the process. The next challenge is installing a speaker. Now if this was an F unit or a steamer with a tender, I probably wouldn't have to do anything to the speaker. But because this is an SD40, this speaker will not fit well anywhere in this in this shell. So what we're going to do is replace the speaker with a small oval speaker. Okay, I have removed the wires from the old speaker and I have tinned the post of the new speaker. And now I'm going to add the wires again as best I can without blocking the camera lens. Add the wires to the new oval speaker. Now just like soldering anything, you always want to heat the surface up as best you can and allow it to cool before moving on to the next one. The wires in this case are orange and gray and I recommend if possible using a heat sink or some kind of clamp to keep the heat from going up the line. If you use a pair of pliers and you do it quick you'll probably be okay but this works good. Right, surface is heated, wires in, let it cool and hopefully I didn't melt any of the plastic along the way. Alright, good connection. Okay, the next thing to do is to seat the speaker as well as the capacitor. And if I place this shell down right behind the locomotive, you will notice the only spot that really has any room to put a speaker is right up in here. So that's what we're going to do. I've already placed a piece of double-sided uh, tape. Actually, I believe it's carpet tape. It holds pretty well. In my other videos, I used an enclosure and then placed the tape. That's okay, too, if you can make it fit in here, and I believe it might. But for right now, I'm just going to install a speaker, and we'll give it a test run after that. Okay, guys, as you can see, I've removed the locomotive cab, which just comes right off of here. To help me mount the speaker, I had to make a slight adjustment so it fit properly in there. And I'll zoom in a little bit so what you can see. I had to use a little bit of ingenuity to kind of hold it in place. A little bit of glue and then again my double-sided sticky tape. Now just a couple little side notes with this. One, in this case it was an Othern, so be careful your handrails because they will break with an Othern. And two, I had used a Soundtrax small oval speaker. Had I used a mini oval speaker, I may have had an easier time placing this and maybe even using the enclosure. So there you have it. I know I got the cab off at the moment, but I'll let you guys check that out a little bit.